If you came through this side door today and passed through the courtyard, you might have noticed that something rather prominent was missing. Now, if you didn't come through the courtyard, you came through the front doors, I'll give it away. The maple tree that is in the courtyard here is gone. The tree that many of us grew up with, that we played around or even climbed up, is no more. That's because it had a disease. It was rotting. And it was going to fall in any of three directions, either on top of the power lines, on top of the church sacristy, or through my bedroom window. So it had to come down. Now, the image of a tree is on my mind today because I think it's a good image for the individual that we get in today's gospel. And frankly, a good image for my life and yours. So three questions today. What does a tree do? How can a tree hurt or impede us? And third, what are we supposed to do with our trees? First, what does a tree do? Well, a tree obscures things. It hides things. You wouldn't believe how many birds' nests were in that tree. Now all those birds are going to have to find new trees in the courtyard. A tree blocks light from coming through, so a tree, this tree blocked sunlight from reaching my vegetable garden, and as a result, I didn't get very good, good, good vegetables this year. Next year might be better. A tree is a good place to hide. You can get up inside, people can't really see you, and it's a good place to see from a distance. You get a bird's eye view of everything. So in comes today's figure, Zacchaeus. Now growing up, I was used to seeing Bible illustration and coloring books with this little cute image of this little guy, totally harmless, named Zacchaeus, that somehow came down from this tree. He was anything but harmless, though. Zacchaeus would have been the scum of the earth to the people of his time. He was not just any tax collector, he was one of the chief tax collectors, which means he would have been filthy rich. All because he worked for the oppressive Roman Empire. So he had to charge taxes, but all he had to do was turn in a certain amount of money to the empire. He could have charged more, and often what they did is they did charge more, and they got to keep the rest for themselves. He had soldiers, law enforcement on his side, so that anyone who didn't pay the taxes that he ordered would have gotten retribution for it. And what's worse, he would have been one of the locals. Not someone who came in from the outside. He would have been one of them, living in town, hired by the empire. He's extorting his own people. And so he would have been hated by his own people. A traitor who took advantage of the poor so that he could make more money. And so when Jesus is passing by through this town of Jericho, Zacchaeus would have been torn inside. He, like everyone else, would want to see this man, Jesus. But he's likely afraid of what's going to happen. If he gets noticed, will Jesus call him out? Will the people shut him down? He can't get too close, and since he's short, his solution is to climb up the sycamore tree, where he can first hide from the crowd, and second, he can get a view of Jesus without being seen. But is it good to remain at a distance from Jesus? And that brings us to our second question. How does a tree hurt or impede us? Because you see, Zacchaeus was fascinated with Jesus. He would have heard about Jesus, who was the miracle worker, this great teacher, this guy who called out the authorities of his day. Maybe Zacchaeus felt in a certain degree of guilt and shame for what he'd done. And he just wants to catch a glimpse of Jesus, see who this guy is. But you know what? He would have preferred to remain at a distance in his tree, comfortable with the security of his own lifestyle, not having to be confronted face to face, and not having to be vulnerable. And doesn't that describe well you and me? When it comes to a life centered in the Lord, we prefer a comfortable distance. We like to be spectators in the bleachers, up in the tree. Sure, I'll come to Mass each week and maybe say a few prayers throughout the week, but to have to come face to face with Jesus, to have to be confronted by Him on ground level, to give my life, my family, my job over to Him, I don't think I'm ready for that. 
And so we're hesitant with God. We fear getting vulnerable from God, and we don't want to come down from that tree to ground level, and as a result, we stay comfortably perched in our tree. Let me just give you a few examples. One of them would be marriage. Why would so many people my age decide to move in with their boyfriend or girlfriend without any intention of getting married anytime soon? Well, it takes commitment. You have to get involved. You have to get vulnerable. And when you're not in control anymore and someone else is in control, it strikes to the heart of our cultural mindset that says, I'm in charge. I have my rights, my autonomy, my freedom. All of you who are married know that. You're not in control anymore. Someone else is, and you have to get vulnerable. You have to get involved. Take another example, which would be giving. Why would you only give maybe a little bit, but never take the next step to give more to some charity or the church or whatever other cause? Because it means becoming vulnerable. It's getting involved. It's losing that personal security. It's being perched in that tree still. And I think of my own life as a priest where there are so many times where I just don't want to get involved. People who might give me headaches and I see them coming my way. Or there are big fights in the parish that I'm the one who has to break up. I don't want to do it. And then I hear the voice of the Lord saying, Nate, don't be afraid to be vulnerable. Don't worry about getting involved. I'll take care of you. We don't want to be vulnerable with the Lord, and we don't want to come face to face. Why? Because it's terrifying. It's terrifying to get vulnerable. Where now everything is out in the open, you have to come down from the tree of your own security and your personal autonomy, and now you have to get involved, because involvement always means a costly vulnerability, and you lose your safety But what does Jesus do with Zacchaeus? Does Jesus say, you there, how dare you treat these people so poorly? How dare you extort people so seriously? He doesn't chastise him. And he simply says, Zacchaeus, come down. Come down from that tree. Don't hide anymore. I know what you've done. Yes, it's terrible. But I want to see the good that's still within you. I have greater things in store for you. And you notice what happens. Zacchaeus, who's afraid, he's up at, perched in this tree. Now he comes down from the tree. He meets Jesus face to face at ground level, no longer at a distance. He experiences conversion from meeting this man, Jesus. He repents of the wrong that he's done, and he doesn't just stop there. He goes to the next step and makes reparation for it. And he repays back more than what he's extorted. He's converted himself, all because the Lord invited him down from the tree. So what do we do with the trees in our own life? That's the third question for today. What is your tree? It might be some attachment. It might be something that you're just not willing to let go of. Maybe some habit or some addiction that's very unhealthy and that you want to kick. Maybe it's some escape mechanism that keeps you from facing the challenges of life. Maybe it's some place of shame for what you've done in the past. Maybe the tree is a grudge or a place of unforgiveness from something that happened a long time ago. Whatever the tree is, do we just come down from the tree or do we need to just cut it down altogether. Because that tree, like this maple tree, might be diseased and rotting. And the temptation when we get scared is to go right back up the tree to the place of safety and security. So it's best to just cut it down. So back to the maple tree. There's not even a stump left. If you go out there, all you'll find is some wood chips and a pile of sawdust. Some people have said to me already, it's so barren and deserted out there, aren't we going to plant some more trees? I said, now, now, hold your horses. We'll get there. Regardless of whether a new tree goes up there, today let's just simply ponder on what the tree is in our own life. Let's make that decision to cut it down so that we can be at ground level, face to face 
and vulnerable in the presence of the Lord. Amen.